KCIBFM.com. Welcome in to News and Views with Tom Lamprecht. The stories you've heard and the ones you need to hear. Violent mobs demolished or damaged. What's happening in the streets of our cities? These are not acts of peaceful protest. Delivering vaccines. Stimulus check into the, the hands to send more support to American families and businesses. Pushing for mail-in voting this November. The economy is recovering. Public safety, they care about their jobs, they care about finances. I don't recall being told to be on standby. Your life, your values, your voice. This is News and and views with Tom Lambrecht on Talk 96.3 and 103.7. All right, welcome back in. It is another edition of News and Views. Uh, breaking news, the New York Times has released a story saying the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has told public health officials around the United States to prepare to distribute a potential coronavirus vaccine as soon as late October. It also provided planning scenarios to help states prepare. The documents were posted by the New York Times, and the CDC has confirmed this information. The scenarios uh, the scenarios offered details about distribution for two COVID-19 vaccines. When supplies may be constrained, the documents prior prioritize particular populations for the vaccines, including healthcare professionals, essential workers, long-term care facility residents, and staff of national security populations. So uh, they said they're uh, cutting the red tape. And they're going to get that vaccine out as soon as they can. Now it sounds like uh, could be October. It is uh, unfortunate for the Democrats that that would happen right around Election Day. WITN News is reporting that President Donald Trump has declared Wilmington a World War II heritage city. We told you this was coming. The president gave a 13-minute speech this afternoon at the battleship North Carolina down in Wilmington. Quote, in Wilmington, more than 20,000 workers of the North Carolina Shipbuilding Company poured out every ounce of their strength to build an astonishing 243 ships for the U.S. Navy. And it was the citizens of Wilmington who came together to save a priceless artifact of American history, the glorious battleship behind me, the USS North Carolina. The president did steer the speech at times towards the uh, controversies taking place in the United States uh, concerning the removal of memorials going on in several cities. With this designation, we proudly declare that America, we won't tear down the past. We celebrate our heroes. We cherish our heritage. We preserve our history. And we build the future, Trump said. American warriors did not defeat fascism and oppression overseas, only to watch our freedoms be trampled by violent mobs here at home. We stop those violent mobs very easily. All all they have to do is say, come in, Mr. President, and we'll have it done in an hour, Trump said. Legislation enacted last year requires the Secretary of of the Interior to declare at least one city a year to be a World War II heritage city. Wilmington, North Carolina is the first. Wilmington has been the home to the battleship North Carolina since 1962. The ship was active in the Pacific Theater during World War II and is now a floating museum. And uh, welcome, Mr. President. And the vice president will be in the Triangle tomorrow. And uh, the president's son will be over in Huntersville, North Carolina, on Friday. Speaking of tearing down monuments... There is a story out today, and uh, it is mind-boggling that we're actually having to talk about this. Let me find it real quick for you. PJ Media is reporting that the mayor of Washington, D.C. has put together a commission to consider striking various alleged symbols of oppression from the nation's capital. The commission issued its recommendations yesterday, and if Washington, D.C. acts upon them, Americans may see national landmarks like the Jefferson Memorial and the Washington Monument removed completely. I don't think so. I'm going to go out on the limb here and say, I don't think so. The commission analyzed historical figures in public monuments according to eight D.C. values. Accessibility, diversity, equity, livability. What does livability have to do with a monument? Opportunity, prosperity, resilience, and safety. They examined whether such figures participated in slavery, 
supported systemic racism, supported the oppression of persons of color and or women, was a member of any supremacist organization, or violated the D.C. Human Rights Act, which prohibits discrimination based on age, religion, sexual orientation, gender identity, and national origin. So I guess old uh, Senator Byrd won't, uh, Robert Byrd won't be having any monuments in D.C., the Grand Wizard. If commission members also desired, they could have suggested removing monuments to almost every political figure in American life. After all, many Democrats now condemn the Hyde Amendment, which prohibits federal tax dollars from funding abortion. And that is, right now, you know, we know that uh, Margaret Sanger was eugenics, a racist, and so we ought to eliminate all them. Um, Joe Biden might find himself hashtag canceled. Um, uh, But this, (laughs) if you go by what they're talking about, uh, they could be proposing to eliminate the Washington Monument and the Jefferson Memorial. Uh, it doesn't just end with those two. James Monroe, Andrew Jackson, William Henry Harrison, John Tyler, Zachary Taylor, Woodrow Wilson, uh, Benjamin Franklin, George Mason, Alexander Graham Bell, Francis Scott Key, all of them could be uh, wiped off the map. The commission suggested the federal government remove, relocate, contextualize statues of Christopher Columbus Benjamin Franklin, Andrew Jackson, Albert Pike, George Washington, and to remove memorials commemorating George uh, Thomas Jefferson, George Mason, Francis Griffith Newlands, George Washington. The list <laughs> includes the iconic Washington Monument and the Jefferson Memorial. So they are actually, I mean, this is not, they've actually proposed this. <laughs> it's unbelievable. You know, back in 2017, Donald Trump said in a speech, this week it's Robert E. Lee. I noticed that Stonewall Jackson is coming down. I wonder, is it George Washington next week? Is it Thomas Jefferson the week after? You have to ask yourself, where does it stop? And at the time, all kinds of commentators mocked Donald Trump. Now he looks rather prophetic. There's nothing outlandish. I mean, you could it, it, you look at what these Democrats are doing, what they're saying, what they're proposing, <laughs> and if if you predict something that seems really outlandish to happen a couple of months from now, it's probably not that far removed. East Carolina University came out with a, a poll yesterday. Actually, came out um, late yesterday, earlier today. The latest ECU poll conducted over the weekend following the Republican National Convention finds President Donald Trump in North Carolina with a lead over Joe Biden, 49 percent to 47 percent. Only three of likely voters remain undecided, with the remaining respondents indicating support for another presidential candidate, someone other than Trump or Biden. Not sure who that would be. Of those who answered that they intend to vote either for Trump or Biden, 96% responded that they have made up their mind already. Just 4% said they are still open to changing their mind. You know, that sounds to me like that bodes pretty well for Donald Trump. Results, granted, it's close. I mean, you know, you have a margin of error, and it's within the margin of error. Results from the poll also showed that the level of excitement about voting in the presidential election does not vary significantly from one candidate to the other. 71% of Trump voters and 70% of Biden voters report they are extremely excited about voting for their candidate for president. Uh, Frankly, I'm surprised that for Joe Biden it's that high. I mean, I, I find that curious. North Carolina's U.S. Senate race has Tom Tillis and Cal Cunningham tied at exactly 44% each, 9% undecided. In the governor's race, Roy Cooper leads Dan Forrest 50% to 40%, 8% undecided. What really surprises me about the governor's race, though, approximately 52% of likely voters approve of the governor's overall job performance compared to 35% who disapprove. Governor Cooper also continues to receive high marks for his handling of the state government's response to the coronavirus. That is shocking. 
54% approve, 35% disapprove. I, in, in all honesty, I, I'm, I'm somewhat shocked at that. Maybe I just travel in a, in a close circle. But in, in when I go out and ask people what they think of how the governor is handling the coronavirus, regardless of their political affiliation, I never hear anybody say he's doing a marvelous job. I never hear anybody that even begins to like, and in fact, they actually disagree with the decisions the governor's making. Uh, in the lieutenant governor race, Mark Robinson here, uh, holds a lead over Democrat Yvonne Lewis Holly, 43% to 40%. The election for treasurer, Dale Falwell, holds a single point lead over Ronnie uh, Chatterjee, 41% to 40%. And uh, in the lieutenant governor's race and the treasurer race, roughly 14% of voters remain undecided. You know, when you get down that far down the ballot, I, I realize it's lieutenant governor, but when you get that far down the ballot, average voter, if you went out and asked 100 people who the candidates are, were for lieutenant governor, I, I'd be shocked if 25% of the 100 actually knew the candidates' names. And I bet only 50% could tell you one or the other of the candidates' names. So the big news today, made the news last night, but uh, it's still circulating today, is uh, Queen Nancy. So on Monday, Queen Nancy goes on her favorite cable news outlet, MSNBC, and lectures us about the evils of not following the COVID-19 protocols. Then she condemns the president for allowing individuals to come to the White House last Thursday night to hear the president's acceptance speech. Need that this president didn't care less about the spread of this virus than to see what he did, vandalizing, by the way, uh, the White House by bringing all those people there, no masks, no distancing, and the rest. He slapped science right in the face. And what a bad example that was. So if we're going to succeed in negotiations, we have to look to the science. Dr. Zha has told us over and over that we need uh, um, 3 million tests a day. That's what we have in the HEROES Act. But they just won't do it. They won't take up a strategic plan to do that. So we have a real problem here because they will not, they do not understand the gravity of the problem. They refuse to accept the science and what science is advising. And hence, we have uh, uh, this situation where we, we, I think that what, the, what Donald Trump is saying to the American people, because now we're coming into school this week, kids are going to school and the rest, choose me over your child. This is appalling, but again, Yet again, another reason why, if only they would pay attention to the scientist. First question is, if Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden actually had a conversation with one another, could they understand anything either one of them saying? <laughs> why the hell would I take a test? Well, yeah, because we got to find out whether or not uh, you had a full lobotomy. Um, so anyway, that's Nancy Pelosi early in the day on MSNBC on Monday lecturing the president, telling about how evil he was, how he slapped science in the face. So later that day, later on Monday, Nancy has her staff call an exclusive San Francisco hair salon for a wash and blowout, despite local ordinances keeping salons closed amid the coronavirus pandemic. And it's on video, security vi uh, footage obtained by Fox News, Time-stamped Monday at 3.08 p.m. Pacific time, the uh, Queen Nancy is seen walking through E Salon SF in San Francisco with wet hair. Not a pretty sight. and oh, without isn't that special? <laughs> and, and not wearing a mask. Now, that's the problem. She thinks she's special. It doesn't apply to her. Yeah, Nancy, you are real special. I, I mean, it, this is so infuriating but so typical of liberals, whether it's Al Gore and his several mansions and flying all around the world and his SUVs lecturing us about how terrible, you know, the, the, the carbon footprint is, 
or was Nancy Pelosi lecturing us about how to wear a mask and how you need to obey all the COVID protocols, but they don't apply to them. They never do. What's interesting is the hairstylist was so irritated. Now, they haven't identified specifically where the video came from, but connect the dots. The hairstylist is PO'd at Nancy Pelosi. Why? Because it is her and her ilk that have basically put this woman out of business. She's a mom, single mom, three kids. She is doing all she can do to keep her head above water. One of the stylists rents a chair from her, contacted her Sunday night, uh, received a text from her and said, I'll be there at 2.45 tomorrow. Pelosi's assistant just messaged me to do her hair. She said, are you kidding me? Do I let it happen? What do I do? And uh, she said, uh, rather ironic that she would pick this language since Nancy Pelosi just said Donald Trump slapped science in the face. The uh, owner, her name is Erica Kois. She said, it's a slap in the face. And then uh, she went in, you know, that she feels she can go and do and get her stuff done while no one else can go in. And I can't work, the salon owner said, adding she can't believe the speaker didn't have a mask on. It's just disturbing. Now, what is really mind-boggling about this, Nancy Pelosi held a press conference today. <laughs> I'm not kidding. She said she was set up. This was a setup to catch her. This was wrong, and they set her up. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah, Nancy. In, in other words, um, well, if they set you up, I guess your aide was in on it, right? Unbelievable. The salon owner said no one can last. And then then she's so she the salon owner then goes from talking about the hypocrisy of Nancy Pelosi to the Democrats that are running San Francisco. And again, it's the same ilk as as Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi doesn't have any question about the local Democrat mayors and the governor of California. The salon owner went on to say. No one can last anymore. I've lost 60% of my clientele because everyone is fleeing the city. The area where her salon is located has turned into, quote, a third world country, she said, saying that every other storefront is completely vacant and shut up and boarded up. And because of the shutdown and the store closures, we've lost people, my clients, my employees, and that is due to the politics in San Francisco. It has gotten so extreme, she said. It is so night and day from how it was just a year ago. Everyone is fleeing. So the question is then, are, 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 these, are these morons learning? I mean, look, the people of San Francisco voted them into office. They voted Nancy Pelosi into office. They voted for their mayor. They voted for their city council. They voted for their governor. Are they going to wake up? Are they going to continue to vote like idiots? The hypocrisy is mind-boggling of of Nancy Pelosi. It is mind-boggling. And then instead of just taking responsibility, she said, yeah, you know what? I blew it. I mean, lie about it. Yeah, you're going to lie about it. You're going to say, well, you know, I forgot or something stupid like that. But to turn around and blame the salon owner and say that she was set up I really, I, I, I hope, I hope that the Democrats can see through this, as Sadie would say, crap, because that's all it is. Unbelievable. We got to take a time out. When we come back, the uh, moderators for the presidential debates have been announced, and uh, as you might imagine, what we've got coming up in front of us is pretty much how the moderators have been picked in the past. It ain't good for Republicans. But, you know, I don't I don't care who they pick. They could pick Barack Obama to moderate the debate. And uh, quite frankly, Joe Biden, uh, I don't think it's going to be a good night for him. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Fabric and Home Furnishings in Arlington Village is Greenville's complete home design center. They have an amazing design team and offer so much more than just fabric. At Fabric and Home Furnishings, they have the area's largest selection of Krypton fabric in stock. You can spill red wine on a white sofa with Krypton fabric and watch it roll right off. The Fabric and Home Furnishings design team will design a sofa for you, help you reupholster your existing sofa, or come to your home and help you with your entire project. Lisa and Dale Pendry at Fabric and Home Furnishings work hard to keep their inventory made in America. They support local craftsmen, employ ECU design students, and they can help turn your Eastern North Carolina home into a show place. Find them on Facebook at Fabric and Home Furnishings and go see them at the store in Arlington Village. It's time to make your home a masterpiece with the help of Fabric and Home Furnishings. So much more than just a fabric store. I'm Dan Forrest. Closed schools deny our children their friends, sports, proms, graduations, their childhoods. Once past, these moments are gone forever. There's no scientific reason that justifies the pain and sadness we're causing our children. What's more, closed schools don't work for working parents. Deciding whether to educate your child or work to feed them is a choice no one should have to make. I'm Dan Forrest. When I'm governor, we will protect the vulnerable and reopen our schools. Paid for by the committee to elect Dan Forrest. Smitty's Restaurant is back open every day for breakfast and lunch from 5.30 to 2. Smitty's is back with their great biscuits and full breakfast items every morning and their great country cooking for lunch at the Country Mart location on Highway 11 between Greenville and Bethel. And don't forget Country Mart stores are now the home of Shell Gasoline. Save five cents per gallon on your first 20 gallons with gold status. And remember, Country Mart has your 93-octane non-ethanol premium for boats, lawnmowers, and other small engines. Country Mart Highway 11, where Smitty's is now open, and Highway 903 in Stokes. Time Shroners, what I'm about to share may save you thousands of dollars. I'm Gordon Newton, president of the Newton Group and author of the Consumer's Guide to Timeshare Exit. In the last 15 years, I've heard everything imaginable from exit companies trying to get you to hire them. I've heard them advertise a money-back guarantee. The truth is those guarantees fall flat time and time again as bad exit companies file for bankruptcy and take your money with them. I've heard them try to earn your trust, claiming they pioneered timeshare cancellation in 2008. The ugly truth is that's not possible. Newton Group has been leading the exit industry long before that. I've even heard exit companies pay celebrity endorsers to convince you they're experts. The truth is the experts at Newton Group wrote the Consumer's Guide to Timeshare Exit. Every year, timeshare owners lose millions of dollars by hiring the wrong exit company. If you want out of your timeshare, call Newton Group at 800-800-1764 for your free no-obligation consultation and free copy of the guide. That's 800-800-1764 or newtongroup.com. Let your voice be heard this November. Register to vote now at vote.gov. I suppose it would be my civic duty. From Talk 96.3 and 103.7, here's Tom Lamprecht with more news and views. Welcome back in. It is News and Views for a Wednesday. And uh, taking a look at your weather forecast, a chance of showers or thunderstorms mainly before 7 o'clock tonight in eastern Carolina. Low tonight around 77. Chance of precip is 30%. Thursday, mostly sunny with a high near 95. And then come Friday, it begins to drop a little bit. Sunny, a high near 94. But the weekend, the weekend is looking great. Saturday, sunny, high near 85. Sunday, sunny, high near 84. So the late summer weather with the lower temperatures is starting to uh, kick in. Gateway Pundit has announced that debate moderators announced for the presidential debates earlier today. And uh, basically, they're all anti-Trump people. Chris Wallace. You know, Chris Wallace used to be pretty good. I used to watch Fox News Sunday, and I could watch the whole program without throwing anything at the TV. Not anymore. The Commission on Presidential Debates has made their decision who will moderate the three debates between President Trump and Vice President Joe Biden. Now, this is assuming Joe Biden shows up. After uh, presiding over the last presidential debate of the 2016 election, uh, Fox News' Chris Wallace will return on September the 29th to oversee the first face-off between Trump and Biden in Cleveland. The second debate will be in Miami. It will be held by C-SPAN political editor Steve Scully. And on October the 15th, the third debate in Nashville will be moderated by NBC's Kristen Welker. Um, That will be on October the 22nd. Um, Question. Should they go ahead and have the debate even if Joe Biden doesn't show up? I mean, I think they should. 
I mean, they've, they've put all the work into it. They've announced it. They've, uh, the, the Trump campaign is preparing for it. Should they not at least have, and now they won't do it. If Biden doesn't show up, I mean, these liberals, oh, we can't do it then. But they should. Ask Donald Trump a question. Let him have the entire time, the entire 90 minutes. Ask him anything you want. Joe Biden won't be there to respond, but but Chris Wallace has turned into a complete Trump hater. Uh, again, Fox News Sunday used to be okay. I mean, I felt like I could watch it, and they'd, they'd have at least both sides on there. But Wallace has just turned into an attack dog on Trump. In December, he said, I believe that President Trump is engaged in the most direct, sustained assault on freedom of the press in our history. Uh, unfortunately, with the candidate that they have this year, if Donald Trump objected to whoever the moderator is, we'd say, okay, we won't have it. But in a normal year, when the Democrat has got a full functioning brain, they would want the debate as bad as the Republicans would want. I mean, normally the challenger would want the debate, right? It is going to be an interesting debate because Donald Trump, been president for four years and you know a lot of things that he has done in four years he'll he'll defend joe biden has been here for 50 years vice president for eight of those 50 years and so he's got more to defend than donald trump has fox news is also reporting wisconsin donors have backed president trump more than joe biden as both presidential candidates make visit to the critical battleground state this week Trump has raised $3.3 million from Wisconsin. Biden has gotten $2.2 million, so 30% more for Donald Trump. Donors from Kenosha, the site of the racial unrest, overwhelmingly backed Trump more than Biden. $81,287 for Trump, $39,401 for Biden, twice as much for Donald Trump, uh, a third more from the entire state. Uh, follow the money. Wisconsin is an important state for Trump's re-election. Democrat presidential candidates have won here since President Ronald Reagan in, 18, in 1984, but Trump broke the streak in 2016 by narrowly beating Hillary Clinton. The um, Trump was in Kenosha yesterday, praise law enforcement. Joe Biden is supposed to be there tomorrow. Biden will travel there on Thursday, his first trip to Wisconsin during the campaign. He sought to both condemn violence and soothe racial tensions after the shooting of Blake, a black man who two protesters were fatally shot by a 17-year-old in the aftermath in Kenosha. He blamed Trump for making the unrest worse with his rhetoric, saying the president long ago forfeited any moral leadership in this country. He can't stop the violence because for years he has fomented it. Fires are burning, and we have a president who fans the flames rather than fighting the flames. That's rich, concerning, considering 14 members of the Biden campaign and your pick for vice president are encouraging people to give and themselves have given from their personal funds to the Minneapolis Freedom Fund to bail out anarchists so they can get back on the street and burn more cities down. In fact, here is, this is cut to uh, Clark, here is Kamala Harris from earlier this summer. She was on with Stephen Colbert, and they were talking about the, quote, protesters, the rioters. And this is what she had to say about those out on the street who were destroying the cities. Stop. And that's, they're not, this is a movement, I'm telling you, they're not going to stop. And, and everyone beware, because they're not going to stop. It is going to, they're not going to stop before election day in November, and they're not going to stop after election day. And that should be, everyone should take note of that on both levels, that this isn't, they're not going to let up, and they should not. And we should not. Um, how does she know that they were not going to stop, that they were not going to let up? How does she know that? And she said, we shouldn't let them. <laughs> I mean, is that not uh, a little curious? Just asking. Oh, this is great. New York Post is reporting an Antifa leader known as Commander Red was busted 
for carrying a flamethrower to a Wisconsin Black Lives Matter rally. A flamethrower. He was arrested, and when this tough guy, Mama's Boy, was arrested, the police report says he dropped into the fetal position and began crying. I'm not kidding. These are these vicious individuals who dress up in black, completely cover themselves from head to toe, just with their eyes showing. And uh, this tough guy, Matthew Banda is his name, 23 years old, known to be a violent Antifa member who incites violence and otherwise relatively peaceful protest. He was arrested, this according to WBAY in Green Bay. He was carrying stickers and a flag for a controversial Black Lives Matter group and for Antifa. And uh, he also had a military-grade five-minute smoke grenades, firework rockets, and a flamethrower. He was stopped after being spotted with a whole bunch of white people with sticks, baseball bats, and helmets heading to a Black Lives Matter event in Green Bay. The others fled when the cop blocked them with a squad, squad car. But Banda was stopped, dropped into the fetal position, and began crying, according to police reports. He complained that the officer got on top of him, which police denied. It's worrisome when people associated with Antifa come here to Green Bay from out of town for the purpose of committing violent acts, Green Bay Police Chief Andrew Smith told the station. At the time of Saturday's arrest, Banda was out on a $10,000 cash bond after being accused of pointing a loaded gun at a police officer as well as biting and kicking a cop at a protest earlier this month, the report said. Now, first of all, carrying a gun and attacking a police officer why is he already out and and then this i don't know who will be the judge that determines what kind of bail will allow him out again but this guy should not have any kind of bail release so he's he's been arrested for violence for carrying a loaded gun he goes out and he he goes and starts rioting again with a flamethrower i mean they ought to throw him in jail and just say no there's no bail zero bail you, you cannot be trusted. None of these people can be trusted. <laughs> but Mr. Tough Guy starts crying, crying for his mommy. Uh, by the way, uh, a, a, I mean, the, the Green Bay police chief saying these people are coming from out of town. There's a new report out today that um, the cities of West Hollywood, Seattle, Portland, Pasco, Washington, um, Palo, Vest, uh, Palo Verde's estate, California. These are just a handful of cities where people were arrested recently in Kenosha. That's where the rioters were coming from, all across the country. In Washington, D.C., the riots that were up there, the uh, Metropolitan Police Chief, Peter Newsham, said, quote, from Thursday until early this morning, the large majority of the arrestees, over 70%, are not from the District of Columbia. So they appear to be folks who are coming into our city, our peaceful city, with the intent of destroying property and hurting folks. The Department of Justice has launched an investigation into the organizations and the individuals paying for these individuals to move across the country. Department of Homeland Security Secretary Chad Wolf told Fox News that the tactics used in riots in some cities are being imported to others. The investigation comes after calls from uh, Rand Paul, Ken Buck, and uh, Trump-supporting Democratic uh, State Representative Vernon Jones, and more. Uh, but uh, suspicions confirmed. I mean, we've been saying this all along, that these people are not local people, and indeed they aren't. They bring in enough people to get the local people that want to loot on their side. And again, you're out there marching and all you need is a handful of people, a little leaven, leaven's a whole loaf, a handful of people to get the uh, crowd going. And that's exactly what happens. The, um, and by the way, the, the thing that started all this off, the George Floyd death, Attorneys for the former Minnesota Minneapolis police officer, Derek Chavon, are requesting the dismissal 
of murder and manslaughter charges against him for the death of George Floyd. And why? Well, first of all, as we mentioned last week, there are new memorandums that have come out saying that George Floyd had a lethal amount of fentanyl in his system. But beyond that, the Minnesota Police Department training manual tells officers to do exactly what this police officer did when subduing violent or resisting, uh, or resisting suspects by placing their knee on their shoulder. Uh, there's also, they, they talk about the fact that there is something that happens when a suspect is on drugs. It's called excited delirium, where because of the drugs, the suspect has, for lack of a better description, almost supernatural powers and according to the police manual that instructs the police officers how you subdue someone that is on drugs, as George Floyd was, is you put your knee on their neck. And this is not uncommon with other police manuals from across the country. In other words, this police officer, even though he's been vilified, was following proper procedure. And there are all kinds of, this is actually on the, the town hall website, and there are all kinds of pictures on there showing other officers, some in the training manual, some from other situations, that are doing the exact same thing. So the uh, attorneys are saying, you know what, the charges need to be dismissed. 561-8255. we got to take a time out. When we come back, we'll get to your phone calls. Dave, hang in there. Look forward to talking to you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Jim Clement from Town Insurance is with me in the studio. Jim, this has been an interesting time for everyone. What has Town Insurance done differently during the crisis? First, Henry, we've tried to put our people first, make sure that they're safe in their working environment, and we've been able to adopt a policy where people are working remotely from home on a rotational basis. Secondly, we've got to be realistic about the situation we're dealing with. We're all being impacted one way or the other by this pandemic, and we've got to acknowledge the reality of the situation, try to stay positive for our employees as well as our clients. You work with a lot of different insurance carriers, Jim. What are they doing for your clients right now? Each of these carriers is trying to establish what is the new normal, and that means being flexible in payments and being adaptable to change. You guys are the best, Jim. We appreciate your uh, information and what you're doing for your clients right now. For more information, call Town Insurance at 252-756-8300. And as Jim always says, it's time to come to town. University PC Care has been ENC's go-to IT expert since 2006. And now Ashton and his team want everyone to know they're still open for business during this virus outbreak, especially since Apple has temporarily closed its stores. So for local Apple authorized service and repairs on any PC in the Greenville and Newburn area, simply call 252-558-1280 for support. Many services can be done remotely, and they also offer free pickup and delivery. Learn more at universitypccare.com. With over 50 stores in eastern North Carolina and southeastern Virginia, Duck Through Food Stores offers brand name gas in a wide range of food, snacks, and beverages. Get your Duck Through Rewards card and receive 25 cents off per gallon upon registration. After that, Duck Through Rewards members receive 3 cents off on all gallons of gas up to 20 gallons. And cool rewards like buy 6 20 ounce Pepsi products and get the 7th free. Get your Duck Through Rewards card now and start earning points for discounts on gas and free drinks and snacks. Duck Through. There are lots of ways to be a kid. My way is to take a road that's not easy. So it's a good thing I'm an adventurer. That's why I'm going to be a Cub Scout. Because scouting will guide me to really big things. It will teach me to navigate the woods with confidence. And to navigate the world with confidence, too. Scouting will show me a kid who is brave, trustworthy, loyal, and kind. A kid who is always prepared. A kid who is me. So scout me in. Heaven is just as real as Antarctica. I don't think anybody here has ever been to Antarctica, but it is real. It's there just the same, and it's even whiter and brighter, heaven is, than Antarctica. And as America is real, and Antarctica is real, heaven is a real place, and we really get to go. The Winning Side with Pastor John Keeter, heard Sunday mornings at 9.30, here on WTIB and WRHT. 
your week. Police officers, I'm praying for you. Your news every day. Convalescent plasma for patients. As events happen. We can't have Joe Biden rule the country and have no police. We'll happen to be there. Joe Biden's agenda is made in China. Oh, man. This is Tom Lamprecht with more news and views on Talk 96.3 and 103.7. Welcome back in. It is news and views for a Wednesday. Let's go to the phones, 561-8255 if you want to join us. Dave is on the line. Hey, Dave. Hey, Tom. Hey, uh, thanks for your voice of reason, you know, every evening. Well, I appreciate but, uh, it. My, uh, call, the reason I called was, and I haven't heard anybody talk about it, but you remember back uh, when uh, the Bernie Sanders supporters said that if he didn't get the nomination, Milwaukee was going to burn. Yeah. And then the rest of these cities were going to burn, too. Man, they're burning. Well, is it just coincidence that this is happening now? No, I don't think at all. I think that's a great point. And, uh, yeah, you're you're connecting the, the obvious dots. And just like that audio I played earlier, how did Kamala Harris, who's right in that same camp, how did she know that this would continue? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. she 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 talked about that what uh, forty five days ago on Stephen Colbert. Hey, it, it's all orchestrated just like this coronavirus. And uh, I think eventually, I think eventually, we're going to find out. Um, I mean, there, there, you know, you've got your your suspicions of who is uh, financing all this. I think his initials are GS, but. Um, yeah, it, it is. Um, it's going to be interesting as the uh, layers of the onion are peeled back. Uh, again, though, I, we had a caller yesterday to talk about this. It'll also be interesting now that the polling. It looks like the, all this uh, rioting is is hurting the Democrats and helping the Republicans. It'll be interesting to see if it subsides. But again, they want anarchy, and uh, I. Uh, what, what will really be interesting, too, is, I mean, my suspicions are that it's all going to disappear come election time for a while. But uh, they might uh, they might continue just to w- want uh, total annihilation, you know, just just uh, scorched earth mentality for our own country. I mean, these people hate the United States. They're they're not socialists. They're communists. They hate the yeah, United I, States. I, I think it'll continue until Trump is reelected and then. He'll go in there and clear, uh, you know, clean house and get this place back to order. But uh, I, I hope I, so. I I, uh, I just I hope and pray. And I, I think Donald Trump is going to win. I mean, you know, there's another article out today. A, a Democratic group came out and said, you know, Donald Trump, and this is a Democratic polling group, said Donald Trump looks like he's going to overwhelmingly win except wait for a few days after the election when all the mail-in ballots come in. I mean, are they just yeah. basically admitting, okay, the, the cheating will get Biden over the top? Exactly. That's the only way Biden will win is when, if they cheat or, win, or if they win cheating, if they get away with cheating. Well, they're going to cheat. And, and what the, the last election, the last presidential election between uh, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, I mean, granted, they, you know, she's still saying she won, she won the popular vote, but – the, the difference in the critical states uh, and the electoral that, that affected the electoral college, I think it was only a, a difference of like 80,000 votes, 78 to 80,000 votes. So it would not be, you know, assuming that Joe Biden got the same amount of votes that Hillary Clinton did, it, it wouldn't be hard for them to steal it if they could get away with it. We'll see. Pray for our country. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate the call. 561 8255. The Daily Wire is reporting Democrat Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler told residents in his condo building building where he lives on Monday that he intends to move out of the facility after it was attacked by far-left extremists, saying he was doing so for their safety. So I I assume that he thinks that they're attacking the building because that's where he lives. But he's on their side. I mean, this back in June, the Daily Oregon reported Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler pledged the city will divert $12 million from the police bureau and other city departments to directly support communities of color, defund three police units, including the gun violence reduction team, and ban officers from using chokeholds as a part of plans to reform the Portland uh, Police Bureau. So this guy is... Heading, getting out of his condo, moving away for the safety of his neighbors, so he says. 
But this is also the guy that wants to defund the police. How's it working out for you, Mr. Mayor? Five six one eight two five five. Let's go to Mike. Hey, Mike. Hey, how you doing? Doing well. Good to hear from you. Yes, sir. Hey, I, I've got two things here. Let me cut off the radio. I got two things here. I know uh, you know George Soros is sponsoring Antifa. I, yeah, I that doesn't surprise me. I, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 now that you mention that, I do think yeah, aren't there? There's some people have gone out and connected the dots when you give to uh, certain source groups. It goes right to Antifa. I think I know why he's doing that, and it sounds crazy, but he's got a pattern. First, he broke the Bank of England to defund and made a billion dollars off defunding the or was it? Uh, de- he lowered the value of the pound and made a billion dollars off of that. Right. And then he was, they say he was uh, responsible for the fall of Greece, and he made some money off of that. But the Russians, I think, they in- indicted him, and the European community stopped the total uh, chaos in Greece. Yeah, as you're talking, yeah, you're, you're, you're triggering um, my memory. And, yeah, I, I, I remember those things uh, over the last couple of years, yeah. So yeah, it's, I, not it, beyond the, it's not beyond the question that he might try to do something to the American dollar to make money off of that. No doubt. No doubt. And, and I mean, he just, he's, he's, a, uh, he's just an evil guy through and through. Hey, thanks for the call, uh, Mike. We've got to take a time out. Stay with us. Jeremy, John, we'll get to your calls right after this. That's what sleeping with a CPAP sounds like. If you can't use CPAP, imagine pressing a button and it's sounding like this. That's sleeping with Inspire. No mask, no hose, just sleep. Inspire is a sleep apnea treatment that works inside the body with one click of a remote. That's right, just a button. If you have sleep apnea, great sleep awaits at InspireSleep.com. That's InspireSleep.com. Inspire. Sleep apnea innovation. No mask, no hose, just sleep. Talk to your doctor to see if Inspire is right for you and review important safety information at InspireSleep.com. Pumpkin Spice is back at Krispy Kreme, and their delicious donuts and lattes are enough to make even pumpkins themselves proud. Krispy Kreme's pumpkin-approved fall donuts include four seasonal-inspired creations. First up is the fan favorite, Pumpkin Spice Original Glazed Donut. Next is the Pumpkin Spice Cheesecake Donut, filled with creamy cheesecake filling and topped with an icing drizzle. Then there's the glazed old-fashioned Pumpkin Spice Cake Donut. And last but not least, the all-new Pumpkin Spice Cinnamon Roll Donut that's dipped in a pumpkin spice sugar blend and topped with cream cheese icing and a cinnamon swirl. And you can wash it all down with a pumpkin spice latte, caramel latte, or original glazed latte. Fall isn't fall without leaves, hoodies, and Krispy Kreme donuts. Pumpkin lovers, hurry to Krispy Kreme today. Krispy Kreme, Greenville, Goldsboro, Rocky Mount. North Carolina's challenges are as unique as its 532 cities and towns. That's why NC State Extension brings science-based solutions to hometowns from Manteo to Murphy. At NC State, what we think and do delivers local solutions for local challenges. Sponsored by NC State's College of Agriculture and Life Sciences and the North Carolina Association of Broadcasters in cooperation with this station. Mom, Dad. Before you throw out those unused medicines, just think for a minute. Grandma, Grandpa, all you guys take meds. That's why you gotta dispose of your old pills correctly. Those pills for your back pain or migraines. When you throw them in the trash, those medicines can become lethal in the wrong hands. Our Our hands. hands. You may be finished with that medicine. But those pills are making me real popular at school. My brother James could think they're candy. Our dog loves to get in the garbage, and those meds can make him sick or worse. So So stop. stop! There are better ways to dispose of your unused meds. There are lots of police stations, local pharmacies, and hospitals that are approved to take in unused meds and dispose of them safely. Disposal sites are close by. It's easy, and it's the right thing to do. For For us. The ones you love. To find a medicine disposal site near you, visit www.safe.pharmacy. A public service message from the National Association of Boards of Pharmacy. Back to news and views. Talk 96.3 and 103.7. So I was talking about Nancy Pelosi earlier blaming the hair salon salon owner. Here's her statement. It's not long. 
Pelosi said concerning the Salon incident that she was called on videotape. She said, quote, I take responsibility for trusting the word of the neighborhood salon that I have been to many times. It was a setup, and I take responsibility for falling for a setup. I think the salon owner owes me an apology for setting me up. <laughs> five six one eight two five five. Let's go to Jeremy real quick. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, how you doing? Doing well. Good to hear uh, from you. Hey, real quick, I should Nancy Pelosi blame it on someone else. That's what liberals did to someone else. And uh, hey, Jeremy, we're losing you, but I agree with you. Five six one eight two five five. Nancy Pelosi and all liberals blame it on somebody else. John in Elizabeth City. Hey, John. Hey, it's actually Sean. But, Sean. Uh, cool. Hey, sir. Yeah, uh, and uh, I was talking about calling about Wheeler. Wheeler, the only reason Wheeler's leaving the condo that he lives in is because it, the COA got together and said, hey, look, this, this guy's causing us way too much grief and trouble. We want him out. So they voted his tail out. <laughs> Well, who's going to pay for the who's going to pay for the eight hundred thousand dollar condo that uh, he owns? I guess oh, it, no, the government's going to pay for that. He's yeah. got people, right? Well, yeah, yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right when yeah, it comes to Democrats. Nancy, she just plays. Nancy just plays along with the California motto, just like that judge blaming yeah. the people who looted the place. Saying, no, 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 you can't blame them if they need it. I hear you. Hey, Sean, thanks for the call. 561-8255. If you want to call, it have to be tomorrow. We're out of time. Uh, we'll play political trivia tomorrow. Got a great uh, great question. It's uh, going to be an interesting one. I don't know how quick it will go, but uh, got a great prize package, and a, uh, we'll have a good time tomorrow. Join us then, 5 o'clock tomorrow. We'll see you then. Bye-bye, everybody. Like most about my new phone from U.S. Cellular? Hmm.